Does your video footage ever feel like it's missing something? Are you trying to achieve a cinematic or filmic look? Well, today I'm gonna be diving into Dehancer, a plugin that promises to give your footage a filmic look and feel. But does it actually deliver? Stick around to find out. If you're new around here, my name is Larry. I make content for creators just like you. And recently, the fine folks over at Dehancer reached out to see if I wanted to test their plugin. I graciously said yes, and for the last month, I've been testing out the Dehancer plugin for Premiere Pro. And while the folks at Dehancer did give me a license to test out the software, they did not have any input or say into the contents of this video. So first of all, thank you Dehancer for giving me creative freedom. Second of all, all thoughts and opinions in this video are my own. And if that sounds good to you, go ahead and hit that like button and let's get started. So what is Dehancer? Dehancer is a plugin designed for film emulation in photos and videos. If you go to the Dehancer website, it says that it's the brainchild of a team with 30 years of analog film experience aiming to replicate classic film looks digitally. A couple of the key features are they have over 130 camera profiles. They have effects like film grain, halation, bloom, film breathe, and more and it works across platforms like Adobe Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, Photoshop, Lightroom, and even mobile devices. They've pretty much made this accessible to almost any device that you would be editing photo or video footage on. So what does the installation process look like? You can actually try out Dehancer for free before you buy it. You go ahead and download it and then you're able to use some of the effects and to get started with that, you just go to the website, navigate to the purchase or free trial option, hit download, and everything will be downloaded for you. Now, personally, when I downloaded everything, I did run into a slight issue, but it could potentially be internet related, computer related, or any number of things. But I did have to run the installation process two or three times for it to make it all the way through. However, once the process did make it all the way through, everything was exactly where they said it would be. There's no going into the back end of files and folders to try to add project files or updates or plugins or anything. It all seamlessly integrates into Premiere Pro when I close it and then open it back up again. Next, let's do a hands-on demonstration of what it's like to actually run Dehancer. I thought it would be a little fun and a little meta to go ahead and apply some of the Dehancer effect to this video clip that I'm actually working on now. This is the video that you guys are currently watching, so really fun and meta. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag my adjustment layer clip on top of this footage. All of this is pretty much the same, so I'm just gonna drag it out. And that's not an attractive frame, but it's the frame that we're working with, so let's go ahead and navigate to our effects panel. And then you could always search for Dehancer once you have it installed, and then you'll notice that it's under video effects and then under film emulation. So if I go ahead and drag this onto this, you'll notice right away that the color changes and that everything needs to be adjusted. So what we're gonna do is go back to effect controls, click on our adjustment layer clip, and then over here in this panel, you'll notice that all of the things that I mentioned before are right here. So Let's start with input, Rec 709, that is just fine. Next, we'll come down to the film profile that you get to pick. And so most people know Kodak Vision 3 250D. If you're a film buff or if you're somebody who pays, atten pays attention to the film that movies and things are shot with, you'll notice that uh, some of these look and sound familiar. But the one that I like is Kodak Vision 3 200T. Um, as you can see, it gives it kind of a warm vibe. And then something else down here that they enabled is that you can actually push and pull it a little if you want. So you'll see that if I pull it down, it affects the footage in different ways. So I think I'm gonna push 0.5 and I really like the look of that. So I'll close that up. And then as always, you can do an enable, disable down here. And 
already right away i actually really like the look of that so i'm going to leave that alone next i'll come down to film developer here you can adjust all kinds of settings and contrast boost i'm gonna put that back back where it goes and gamma correction and these these all do fun things and then, so if you enable it you can see what these things do put that back gamma correction color separation and then color boost so you can have a lot of fun with this but i'm going to turn that off next we're going to come down to film compression so right away these are some of the default settings and if i click enable you'll see what it can do i actually do enjoy some of the film compression and i actually like these settings so i'm going to leave that where it is next you get to go to expand so if you it's by default enabled you can unenable it luma and then you know you can mess around with some of this but i'm just going to put everything back and I enable that. Next, you can come to the print, and this is another fun setting to play with. And so you can choose Cinelog or Cine Cineon Film Log, Fujifilm, Kodak 2383, or Kodak Endura Glossy. Personally, most of my final images, I've been using the Kodak Endura. You can include an analog range limiter, kind of keeps it a little flat, but then the other thing that you can do is come down here and adjust some of these settings. So you can adjust the target white. You can adjust the exposure, the tonal contrast, color density, and make those colors really pop or kind of fall back. And then everyone's favorite saturation, completely desaturate or keep it at 100. And so if we pause right there and you toggle this on and off, that's already like a massive difference. But let's keep going because there are a few other settings that I really enjoy. I'm going to leave color head alone. Film grain, I'm actually going to change this to 35 millimeter 500. Come down to halation. I like the halation. And if you pay attention to some of this over here, you'll see it whenever it pops up. So just a little bit of halation and then you can actually change the profile. I'm fine with that one. And then we'll come up down to Bloom. I like Bloom too. So if you pay attention to some of those lighter areas, you'll see it pop just a little bit. So that's really nice. I like the 16 millimeter Super 16 look. You can add film damage if you want. You can give it some film breath. I'm not gonna do that. You can add gate weave, over scans. This is those bars on the side that you see in people's footage you can flip it all kinds of stuff you could add a vignette so more of a film vignette instead of just like a regular vignette overlay you can come down here to monitor and so this is fun you can look at your false color a clipping indication and then for output this is my one gripe is that it's total output and that you can't adjust the individualized settings in a perfect world, for example, I would be able to come here and decide how much bloom or change the amount of bloom or change the amount of halation. In theory, you could come in here, turn off all the other settings, go in and create an adjustment layer for that, but I don't want to do that. Personal first world problem, but I would love that. So in theory, you could come in here and completely turn everything down, put it at 65% or leave it at 100%. I'm actually going to turn this down to about 90%. And I think that is a solid look. You could come down here and export a LUT. So I'm going to do normal, export this look as a LUT. And so what this does is allow, it literally allows you to, my computer's old and slow. It literally allows you to go ahead and create a LUT file. So I'm just going to save it to my drive, save. And now I have this LUT file created, which is pretty cool. So if I wanted to, instead of copying and pasting this look, if I come over here, I can add a different adjustment layer, brand new adjustment layer across this footage. And then what we could do is go into the Lumetri color tab, close that, open creative. Uh, what was the name of that? So the name of it is Dehancer, browse Dehancer, open. And so now that LUT has been applied to this footage. And if I toggle this, on and off, you'll see it. And that is a look at Dehancer in action. While I do enjoy a filmic look, I'm not someone who can tell you exactly what film stock looks like what. So in order to get the look that you're actually trying to get, I recommend just playing around with some of the film stocks, some of the effects, 
and some of the profiles until you find something that really suits you or works with the footage that you're working with. So what do you think? Does this project look cinematic or filmic? Go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Now, let's talk about the pros and cons. For the pros, there's a wide range of profiles and effects. It's high quality filmic looks that are really aesthetically pleasing. It has seamless integration into the editing software, and it's pretty intuitive when it comes to using the controls and copy and pasting settings from one project or one file to the next. When it comes to the cons, there are really only very few. To get full range of the product, it's not free. So budget is a factor if that's something that is holding you back. The installation process, like I said, it could have been my mistake or my computer's mistake or an internet connection thing. It could have been a number of things, but that was an issue for me. And lastly, some of the adjustments, while they all work, were a little quirky and I would like to see some of them be just a little bit more flexible when it comes to actually using them. Who is Dehancer actually for? Personally, I think Dehancer is ideal for anyone who's looking to create an indie filmic look. Uh, content creators who are looking for that filmic vibe, that filmic look without actually shooting film. Anyone who loves testing and playing with different looks and anyone who's looking to explore some of the cinematic qualities or filmic qualities of video creation. Personally, I really like the vibe of some of the things that I've been able to create. And if you take a look at some of the video projects that I've been putting out on social media, a lot of them have just a tiny bit of dehancer effects overlaid onto the video footage. And I've even gotten a comment from someone who knows nothing about videos or color grading or anything like that and mentioning wow this looks like it's a movie this looks like it's shot with a film camera so i just think that you know if you're looking for that type of look this plugin and program is exactly what you need to be testing with to come out with some creative and cool looks overall i think the dehancer is a winner in my book if you're someone who's looking to test out cinematic or filmic looks, it's definitely a game changer without having to actually shoot film. So if you want to try it, you can go ahead and use the link down below. Use code ITSLARRYG for 10% off your purchase. If you've tried Dehancer, I'd love to know your experience down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to check out this one next. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and all the other YouTube stuff. And remember to do the work Believe in yourself, and most importantly, keep creating. Peace.